Jay Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jay Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Parivraja Kacharya Ashtra Tadashata Shri Shemadis Devanga Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina Shama Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrinda Vandam Ki Jai Navadip Dham ki jai, Ganga Yamuna Mai ki jai, Tulsi Maharani ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, The Science of God Chapter 9, Prahlad pacifies the Lord with prayers Text 9 Please repeat after me. Manye Dana Bijana Rupa Tapaha Shutaujas Teja Prabhava Bala Paurusha Pudhi Yoga Naradanaya He Bhavanti, Parasya, Pumso, Bhaktya, Tutosha, Bhagavan, Gaja, Yutapaya. Manye, Tanabi, Janarupa, no that's not it right. What's all? Okay. 
Manye dana bi janarup. Manye dana bi janarupa tapa shutau jas. Teja prabhava bala paurusha buddhi yoga ha. Nara danaya hipavanti parasya pumso. Bhaktya tutosha bhagavan gajayuta paya. Manye danabi jana rupa tapa shutau jas. Teja prabhava bala paurusha buddhi yoga ha. Naradhanaya hibhavanti parasya pumso. Bhaktya tutosha bhagavan gajayuta paya. Manye dhanabhi janarupa tapa shutau jas. Teja prabhava bala paurusha buddhi yoga ha. Narayana naya hipavanti parasya pumso. Bhaktya tutosha bhagavan gajayuta paya. Tejaprabhava <laughs> Manye, I consider. Dana, riches. Abhijana, aristocratic family. Rupa, 
Personal beauty. Tapaha. Austerity. Shuddha. Knowledge from studying the Vedas. Ojaha. Sensory prowess. Tejaha. Bodily effulgence. <clears throat> Prabhava. Influence. Bala. Bodily strength. Parusha. Diligence. Buddhi. Intelligence. Yogaha. Mystic power. Na. Not. Aradhanaya. For satisfying. He. Indeed. Bhavanti. Are. Parasya. Of the transcendent. Pumsaha. Supreme Personality of Godhead. Bhaktya. Simply by devotional service. Trutosha was satisfied. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Gaja Yutapaya, under the King of Elephants. Gajendra. Translation and come in purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Prahlad Maharaj continued, One may possess wealth, an aristocratic family, beauty, austerity, education, sensory expertise, luster, influence, physical strength, diligence, intelligence, and mystic yoga, yogic power. But I think that even by all these qualifications, one cannot satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, one can satisfy the Lord simply by devotional service. Gajendra did this, and thus the Lord was satisfied with him. <clears throat> no kind of material qualification is the means. Sorry, just one. No, no kind of material qualification is the means for satisfying the Supreme Personality of God. Had as stated in Bhagavad Gita, only by devotional service can the Lord be known. Bhaktya mam bhajanati. Unless the Lord is pleased by the service of a devotee, the Lord does not reveal himself. Naham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavritaha. This is the verdict of all shastras. Neither by speculation nor by, by material qualifications can one understand or approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Om Gyanati Vrindasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshulun Militam Mena Tasma Shri Gurve Namaha Mukham Katitvacha Lampangam Langai Tegadim Yak Kripita Maham Vande Shri Gurundini Tadinam Vancha Kapitra Bishcha Kripasundi Bivicha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnava Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadad Harsha Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Nam Ram Hare Ram Hare Hare Okay, translation. Translation again. Prahlad Maharaj continued, One may possess wealth and an aristocratic family, beauty, austerity, education, sensory expertise, luster, influence, physical strength, diligence, intelligence, and mystic yogic power. But I think that even by all these qualifications, one cannot satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, one can satisfy the Lord simply by devotional service. Gajendra did this, and thus the Lord was satisfied with him. So, first of all, uh, for the last, I don't know, maybe four days, and then continuing for six days, something like that, I'm, I, I'm losing track. But I have to attend these classes in the morning from 4.30 to 6.30. <clears throat> these uh, ministry, prison ministry classes, just joking, sannyas ministry classes. Um, Was that a mistake that you said prison ministry? Yeah, I'm just joking. Prison ministry classes. No, sannyas ministry classes, uh, yeah, so you have to attend them every morning and every night. So, and most of the devotees, 
besides a few of them are are in India. Um, so it's all on Indian Standard Time, which means 4.30 to 6.30 a.m. here, and then again 10.30 to 12.30 a.m. Uh, here this time. So these two times. Uh, for another maybe five days, something like that. So, so in the Padyavali, Sri Padyavali, a uh, anthology of devotional per, uh, poetry, Srila Rupa Goswami has collected many verses from different authors. Uh, this, uh, a number of the authors are unknown, although they, they wrote such wonderful verses, a lot of them are unknown, but some of them are known, but at least uh, text number eight of Sri Padyavali, uh, in the, the section is Bhajan Mahatmya, the glory of devotional service. So it has a few verses glorifying devotional service. Uh, he mentions one particular verse, which is from, oh, actually, this is a known devotee, from Sri Dakshinatya. Now, of course, we may not know who that is, but at least his name is given there. Uh, so I'll read, uh, I'll read that verse, and it's, it's very closely connected to the verse, the Srimad Bhagavatam verse we read today. Vyadasya charana druvasya chava. No. What's, what's the meter, Druvada Prabhu? Huh? Anyways, we'll just read the English. Um, it's eight of Padyavali. Because my brain's not. <laughs> Vyadyasya chara nam druvasya chavayo vidya garendrasya ka kubjaya kimu nama rupa marikam kim tat sudam no dhanam vam soko vidarasya yarava patir ugrasya kim paurasham bhaktya tushati kevalam chagunar chagunar bhakti priyo marva. So, this translation Where was the hunter Dharma's piety? Dhruva's maturity and Gajendra's knowledge. Where was Kupja's beauty? Where was Sudama's wealth? Where was Vidura's noble birth? Where was Ugrasena's chivalrous strength? Lord Madhava is pleased only by devotional service and not by material qualifications. So if we look at this verse, Dharma's piety, the hunter Dharma's piety. Now who is that hunter? So in the Mahabharata, there's a hunter named Dharma. It's interesting. <laughs> he has the name Dharma, and he's a hunter. Or in some cases, it's translated as a butcher, or as because sometimes when um, when the idea of meat eating or distribution is is considered, uh, there's certain classes that are all more or less lumped into the same category. It means they all experience sinful reactions or karmic reactions from it. One who, one who kills the animal, one who, what, what else is there? What is it? Prepares yeah, prepares the food, distributes the food, it's all, eats the food, There's, transports it. There's all of these. Advertise it, yeah, you could. So, um, so, yeah, it, he, was, he was more so involved in selling meat. Um, and his name was Dharma. And apparently in his last life he was a Brahmin and he was cursed to be uh, in this particular position. But although he was in that position, he was very learned. And not just learned, but he was also very devotional. He would do all types of... Um, all types of uh, devotional things. And we see that within, within, within history that sometimes devotees, they're, they're in professions 
or in situations of their life which are considered to be yeah, sinful or unfortunate positions. But even though that may be, there are yeah, they're great devotees. So this particular Dharma, um, he instructed uh, a a sannyasi in the Mahabharat. So, but on one level, he said, where 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 is his piety? Because there there was some what he was engaged in. And then you have Dhruva's maturity. Madhruva, Mahar, Dhruva, he wasn't mature. He was wanting revenge. It wasn't that he was approaching Krishna out of devo pure devotion, devotional service or pure devotional service. He wanted something from Krishna. And he wanted something material. Not only did he want revenge, I mean, think about it. We all, we're all standing here every day before the deities or we're thinking of Krishna every day, right? That's the idea. <laughs> uh, now, if you stand before Krishna or if you, if, you, if you pray before a picture of Krishna, you say, Krishna, Please let me get revenge. Somebody's offended me. I mean, does anybody here, has anybody here ever prayed for revenge? In other words, you don't have to raise your hand. But uh, if you pray for revenge, or again, it's not that Dhruva Maharaj wanted to live in a better part of, of, of San Diego. You know, he wanted to live in uptown La Jolla or something. Dhruva Maharaj wanted... He wanted to be in charge of the whole universe. He wanted everything. Like it's practically speaking within recorded history, Dhruva Maharaj had the biggest material desire. He wanted everything. And he wanted revenge also. So uh, these aren't very, yeah, you could say mature desires. Uh, so where was Dhruva's maturity? But of course he became purified and he uh, became a pure devotee. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he, it's explained in the Chaitanya Bhagavat that he would always relish this pastime of Juva Maharaj over and over and over again by uh, hearing it from Gadadhar Pandit. Um, and then Gajendra's knowledge. So Gajendra, who remembers who Gajendra was? The young, younger devotees want to go first. Does someone remember who Gajendra is? But why was he an elephant? Who was he in his past? Yeah, he was a great king in his past uh, life before Gajendra. And he became an elephant. And uh, anyways, it's a whole pastime. So where was his knowledge? But at, at a particular point in the body of an elephant, he... You know, remembered everything, and he and he called out to uh, Vishnu. And then you have Kubja's beauty. So Kubja, um, in the in the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, she she was uh, considered to be very, um, yeah, n not attractive by material standards, and. Uh, Hunchback, yeah. And uh, so, you know, as I said, where is Kubja's beauty? Where is Sudama's wealth? So he was very poor. Where is Vidura's noble birth? Where was U Ugrasena's shiver uh, strength? So Ugrasena, he's famous practically for being defeated by uh, Kamsa. That's what he's famous for. But he's, he's, uh, he's a, you could say, like a Chatriya. But Chatri means warrior, means somebody who conquers. But what is he famous for? A lot of the times when people think of Ugrasena, they think, oh, he's the one who was defeated by Kamsa. Uh, so as this devotee is saying in this verse that Krishna or Madhava, he's pleased by devotional service and not by material qualifications, which is a very important point because within this world, uh, within uh, modern society, the the tendency is not just the tendency but the fashion the culture is that if somebody has material qualifications they're considered to be good persons they're considered to be persons worth glorifying they're considered to be persons worth hearing from but in devotional 
society or in Krishna consciousness, that's not the case. Um, one has to be, one may have so many material qualifications, but the most important thing is that if that is it the person's a uh, yeah devotee or a pure devotee. Just like you have Gorka Shordas Babaji, Gorka Shordas Babaji, he was said to be, which is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's uh, spiritual master, he's said to be literate. He could hardly write his name. And in so many ways, he didn't have material qualifications. But what was his qualification? And his qualification that he was a pure devotee of Krishna. And um, great scholars would come to him asking him questions. And the idea is that Krishna, because of his pure devotion, Krishna enlightened him with all necessary answers. And um, even though he was, you could say, materially unqualified in so many ways, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was, yeah, <laughs> qualified and 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 spiritually and materially, he accepted such a person as 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 his spiritual master, somebody to guide him. Um, so. So yeah, it's important to to keep that in mind because uh, sometimes the tendency is to become impressed by people's material qualifications. And also it's a danger in, 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 in running a society that you have people who may be very materially qualified uh, but lacking spiritual substance and such people, you know, tend to rise, may rise to the top. This is another thing. Um, so ultimately, Krishna is only known by uh, devotional service, by uh, bhakti amama bhajanati. He is known by devotional service. He is pleased by devotional service. And Krishna, he decides who he wants to reveal himself to. So as the general saying goes, one cannot um, take, what is it? One cannot, what is it, storm into the kingdom of, the kingdom of God? Yeah, one cannot take the kingdom of God by storm. In other words, you can't just uh, force yourself into the kingdom of God. Or you can't for, we can't force Krishna to appear before us because he chooses who he reveals himself too. And that makes sense in that uh, we are also like that. Like if somebody asks you a question, there's different ways you could answer it. They ask you like a personal question. Oh, tell me about yourself, right? Or tell me about your, 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 your previous life before Krishna consciousness, or tell me how you joined Krishna consciousness. There's different levels to, of, of, of uh, there's different ways in, in which we could answer um, a particular question, any question. So um, we're like that in the sense that, yeah, we, we reveal certain things about us uh, to certain people and not to others. And generally, this is based, if not all the time, this is based on our, um, you could say, the relationship we have with someone. If someone's very close to someone, then they may tell things to that person that they don't tell to other people. So, in a similar way, not, not, um, Krishna he chooses who he reveals himself to, and he reveals himself to somebody who surrenders to him, who, who's a, who, who becomes his unalloyed devotee, his pure devotee. Um, and as Srila Prabhupada says, this is the verdict of all scriptures. Um, so one cannot know Krishna by speculation, one cannot know Krishna by material qualifications, one could only understand Krishna, or approach Krishna, um, through devotional service. So this is the general idea. Does anybody have any question or comment? <clears throat> um, 
Any online? Yes, Veerd Chandra. Uh, thank you for the class. Um, when you uh, told about uh, Dhruva Maharaja and desire, he, and um, I have some uh, analogies that uh, Hiranya Kashipu uh, has the same desire, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, he tried to do it by its own uh, efforts. Yeah. But Dhruva Maharaj uh, did it by surrendering to Krishna, ask Krishna to fulfill his desires. Yeah, that's true. That's the difference between a pious person and an impious person, or a yeah. You, Dhruva Maharaj he had a big material desire, this, but he went to Krishna on uh, following the advice of his mother, his good mother, literally, <laughs> uh, Suniti, right? And. Um, yeah, and then he approached, he, he, he met Narada Muni and he followed the whole process of devotional service. And, and ultimately, actually, Krishna fulfilled his desire. Although, at the particular time when, Dhruva Mahar, when Vishnu appeared before Dhruva Maharaj, he said, I'm completely satisfied, I don't want anything. I was desiring this, this, this whole universe and bigger kingdom than my grandfather, great-grandfather, and but actually I'm fully satisfied um, seeing you, right? Divya Ratna, divine jewel. I was looking for broken glass, but I found you, divine jewel. So, um, but yeah, you have the case of Hiranyakashipu, and he wanted to take over the universe. Of, yeah, and, and, he, and he did it, and he wanted to go through his, his austerity and, and getting benedictions from Lord Brahma. So I think Javita Prabhu has some. I'm just struck by the contrast between all these other prayers. You know, we just had a list of prayers from Brahma and Shiva and Indra and the uh, Kinaras and the Kimburushas and everybody. And uh, the, the, the gist of it is they're very thankful that they were re returned to their position. <laughs> they're servants of Krishna, but they're not expressing this kind of Humility, you know that 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 uh, Pallad is known for, and he, it's, it, 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 you know, his prayers just—they all offer one prayer, and then he has a whole, you know, thirty prayers, forty prayers, and they're all in the same mood. There's even one where he says, "Ah, I was I was born into the demonic race, and I was falling amongst, you know, but you, uh, but your servant Narada Moody imparted to me his qualities, and how could I ever give up the service, you know." Yeah. So it's, it's, it's actually the, the devotional mood that's here. And the others are sakama, you know, devotees. They're devotees and they're, they're thankful. But it doesn't really pacify uh, Nishingadev. Yeah. But Prahlad's mood and his, his whole uh, position is, uh, is softened immediately. It's hard. It's a wonderful contrast. Yeah. Yeah, Prahlad Maharaj, he prayed... Um, he prayed to continue to be a servant of his spiritual master, which is a very important uh, point he's make, he makes later on. Um, it's not that when one becomes self-realized or God-realized, they just, okay, you know, no need for the spiritual master anymore. Srila Prabhupada, one time he was getting off a boat in Mayapur, and he, and he reached his hand out, and one of his disciples grabbed his hand and helped him off. And then Prabhupada gave him a little push. And the devotee was a little surprised. He was wondering what's going on. And then Prabhupada said, yes, this is just like the Mayavadis, the impersonalists. Um, they accept help from a guru, and then when they've achieved their, their aims, they just push him away. So he said, not, Vaishnavism is not like that. That we have a guru and teacher, teachers, and then... They help us, of course, move towards the goal, but even atta attaining the goal, we're, we're still the humble servants of those gurus, those teachers. So he teaches that. He prays for that. He also prays that not, uh, do not let material desires... Um, he, he prays for, for freedom of material desires or to not be impeded by material desires, for them not to... Um, 
take birth in his heart. And he also prays for the deliverance of his father, which was one of the most amazing things, actually. <laughs> I mean, his father tried to kill him, and I don't know. Did we ever count? I don't know if we ever counted. Oh, really? Oh, you just read that. Because it was interesting the other day, because it, there's a general description of the different ways he tried to kill him. Maybe a dozen or something like that, but you, but you read thousands. All right, there you go. So he tried to kill him in thousands of ways, his son. Um, and, and, and Prahlad Maharaj, obviously he knew that. I mean, it was quite clear what he was trying to do. His, his father was trying to kill him. But later on, still, despite that, he was praying, oh, please, Lord, save my father. I mean, it's just like amazing. He wasn't... Um, this, you also see that with Haridas Thakur, when Haridas Thakur was being beaten, and he was beaten in 22 marketplaces, um, later on in the Swayam, or the Mahaprakash, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is revealing his godhood, and, and giving devotees different benedictions. Mostly the devotees were just asking to have a pure, uh, continue the loving relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like, for example, um, Sridhar, Kolavacha Sridhar, he's selling the banana leaves. So Kolavacha Sridhar and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would haggle them for the price, and they had this sweet relationship. So, so Sridhar... Kolavacha Sridhar, he, he prayed, oh, please let the young boy Nimai come and we'll have this relationship, you know, continue. But Haridas Thakur, he prayed to have, continue his existence on always being a humble servant of the Vaishnavas and taking their remnants. <laughs> but in that Mahaprakash Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, he, he revealed something to Haridas Thakur. And he revealed that while you were being beaten in these 22 marketplaces by these, uh, yeah, by these people, I actually um, was immediately going to take my chakra there and just and kill all of them. But because you're praying for them, he was praying for them. Because you're praying for them, my chakra became powerless. So he was actually praying for their welfare. I was like, really <laughs> inconceivable. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he showed Haridas Thakur his, his back, and then there was, there was marks there that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, was taking the uh, beatings that, that Haridas Thakur was supposed to be taking, or was, yeah. So, um, so anyways, this is a similar thing with Haridas Thakur. He was also praying for uh, their deliverance. One, one note on Juva. Yes. Um, in my work of reviewing the revisions in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the famous verse about the four kinds of pious people who come to me, Krishna says. So one of them is artarti, which simply means desire, you know, desiring wealth. And Prabhupada, of course, his, his, his understanding is that means someone who's poverty stricken, you know, of course. Sorry. Uh, but in Baladev's uh, commentary, another category is that Juva is an example. He wasn't poverty stricken, but his whole focus was on wealth in terms mm -hmm. of the, you know. The, but be, but be, because he met Narada Muni, you know, Narada Muni is always always gives just the right formula for whoever he meets. Uh, he gave him a, a system where he, he can you know perform severe austerities, but there's mixed in his chanting of the name and worshiping deity, meditating on Vishnu. So the the desire was purified. He becomes a swaman kadartus meaning the yache. I don't want. But as you pointed out, you prayed for it. Now you got to go rule the kingdom for thirty thousand. <laughs> I have one thing about uh, Prabhupada. Uh, he was saying that something I learned in Mayapur. I also was thinking Gorkhishor Das Babaji, illiterate, couldn't read is the actual thing. Um, well, what does that mean? I mean, I was thinking about it. Um, but it turns out that he actually had the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita memorized. Hmm. So it wasn't like he was a fool. That was from book that Chaitanya Maharaj told me. Said that in class in Mayapur. Nice. 
yeah, the yeah. Apparently, apparently at the at the time in India, it wasn't uncommon for people to be um, illiterate in 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 the sense of yeah. Um, this was mentioned in in that book, that Vaibhava book, that it was quite common for people to, some, at least a, a num good number of people to to be illiterate. But uh, but yeah, definitely Gorkha Shortest Babaji, he was, yeah, storehouse of knowledge and yeah, devotion and personification of renunciation. So for him to memorize the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it was read to him? Must have been read to him. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, Akbar. Thanks. Akbar, the uh, you know Maharaj Akbar, the apex of the Mughal Empire. Uh, you know, knew astronomy, astrology, so, and he couldn't read. Mm. He had things read to him. Guess I think about. Uh, anyway, so much. <laughs> All right. Any any um, online? Okay. All right. Grantrad Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.